Hello and welcome. Today we're going to work on converting our CSS code to SAS. We're going to use SCSS to be exact and let's get started now. So go down to your terminal and yarn start. Let's just start up our development server here and it does. Now go to, if you want to split your terminal like this, just go to this button to split them. If you want to add one, go here to add a terminal. And if you want to navigate between them, that's where you do it with this drop down here. So we also want to yarn run a script we wrote called SCSS. Now with that both working, let's start working on converting this code. Just going to work on these first two things in our list.scss. If you can't find that, src scss components list. Now in here, we're going to make sorts of levels. Now the levels will refer to each other as parents and children. This first level is the list level. Now anything that starts with list can be a child of the list level. So let's take this bracket and contain our child. We'll cover our child with that bracket. Because we have dot list and this also says dot list. And now let's refer to our parent with an ampersand. So we can always refer to our parent or the level up from us with this ampersand. So this right now says dot list underscore underscore card. And when we save, it'll show us the different levels. We have the dot list level, and then we have this level where the ampersand can refer to dot list. So let's take a look at our main.css, that's in styles, main.css, and we can see that the levels are in there as well. So we have dot list, and it isn't contained because this is CSS code, so we're not going to have any of the ampersands or anything. This is what it compiles down to, but you can see what happened there. We had our dot list, and then when we referred to dot list with the ampersand, it knew to put dot list there, underscore, underscore card, on that second level. So let's keep this going. And next thing we have is the dot list card and the hover selector. So we want to make a level for that. We want the ampersand to refer to dot list underscore underscore card. We can do that by containing this within the brackets of dot list and the brackets of underscore underscore card. So we take both of those, we bring it down below the hover paste them in there or retype them. And what we want to do is refer to our parents, refer to both parents at the same time. That's what the end will do now. It'll refer to both of the parents. It will refer to dot list underscore underscore card with just this one ampersand and we'll save that. And we could see that we're now at the third level where this ampersand refers to list and this ampersand refers to list underscore underscore card. We should be able to see that in the main.css as well. Here's our list, the list card, our list card hover. So it's all being compiled correctly because we're writing it perfectly. Let's take a look at our app, make sure we're writing it well. We definitely are, it looks the same. Now we'll make a move down here to dot list card left. Now dot list card left should be in the level of dot list and card, but it shouldn't be in a different level for hover because it's not contained within hover. It's only contained in dot list card. So we want to take the dot list and the card, both of those, remove them from there and put them after left. And now we're in that third group again. So we just put the ampersand and save that. And since we are in that group again, remember what we're doing. We have this ampersand pointing to dot list. We have this ampersand pointing to dot list and card. So dot list card left display of flex should be working in our main. Let's take a look. Dot list card left display flex. Perfect. Let's keep this going. Let's go to dot list card right. We start moving a little bit faster because we know in dot list card right, it's going to be the same as dot list card left. So we'll take those two that we pasted there. We'll put it after right, paste it there. And we want to get rid of dot list card for an ampersand, save that. And there we are on that third level, just like left. That's what we wanted. Next, we're going to one more level. We're going to dot list card right name. So this is actually within 
the level of right. So we want to take right, we want to take that list, card, and right. So here we go. Take all three and put them below name. So outside of our dot list card right name, we have three brackets. This is dot list. This is dot list card. This is dot list card right. So we can get rid of all of this and replace it with one ampersand. Save that and you can see how it moves in. Dot list, dot list card, dot list card right, dash dash name. Look at our main, make sure that it looks like that. Dot list card right, dash dash name. Perfect. All right, we're working pretty smoothly here. So we're going to do two at a time because it's actually exactly the same for these next two. I want to take all three of them. Copy, get rid of them or cut them, however you'd like to do that. Paste them after the next two, so after the price. And now we know what to get rid of. Dot list card right. Select all of that. Command D or Control D if you're on a PC and put an ampersand. Save that. And now we see we're on the same level and we mean the same thing. Dot list card right name description price. And we could see that in the main one more time. There we are, name, description, and price looking perfect, and our app is still looking perfect. So converting this to SCSS has been pretty simple, and we just have one left to do, but it's not within the dot list card right, and it's not within the dot list card, it's just within the dot list. So it's just within that one bracket right here. So that's the level we wanna be on. We wanna be on that second level. So we'll put that bracket after, and we'll change dot list to ampersand, save that, and let's look at it in the main. We see the second level. This means uh, this ampersand was referring to dot list on the second level, and title, and that's working great too. And there we are. All right, so we have just a couple more things to do here. Well, let's start talking about variables because variables are very important in coding in general and even more important when you're working with SAS here because they're so easy, you should be using them everywhere. The first variable I want to make is in this list.scss. I'd like a variable for the background color rather than defining this background color. So let's make a variables scss file in base. So underscore variables dot scss. And then we need to import that to the main. At import dot slash base variables. Now, one thing I like to do when I import things to the main like this is I do like to restart that script. I'm just going to restart it real quick. That's control C to exit out of it. And then yarn run scss to start it again and we're good now. So in our variables, we're going to define one variable and that's the dollar sign, meaning it's a variable, then color dash gray was the color. And we know what the color gray was, that was all F7s, perfect. Now we have our variable color gray. So we'll start with that, just save it here, go to list. So go to the top here so we can import, at import, our variable, which was one up in base and called variable. Perfect. Now we have this in here, we could save it and it is working properly. We want to replace background color, delete all of that. And we're going to replace it with the variable, just dollar sign color gray. And you can see the color gray pops up right away. Let's save that. Let's look in the main, make sure it still says F7s. It does. So that variable is defined that simply and put into use that quickly. Let's do something pretty cool here because we can put colors into RGBAs without alphas and then we could just change the alphas on them. So I'm going to make a variable for color black. And the color black will be zero, zero, zero. Save that. And we'll go back now to our list, CSS. Go to your first box shadow. Get rid of all your color variables. The R, G, B are gone. We're going to write in color dash black and then a comma. And we're going to do that one more time down here. 
color, dash black, and a comma. Don't forget the dollar sign or it won't work. And there we go. So this should still be black. It is, it's still black under there. And we could change that too at any point. That's what's beautiful about this. We're able to change that variable to something else and everywhere it's used, it will be that new thing. So if we wanted it to be some sort of green like that, we could take a look. Now we could see that there's a green outline on the bottom, a green shadow. So if that's some sort of thing we ever need in the future, it's something we can change, but we'll change it back to black. That's the black that we're using. And let's do one more variable in one more file so we can get a little bit of repetition going. We'll do it in the base file and let's do it on font size. This font size of 62.5%. Let's do a variable for it. We'll call it font-size-base. And that will equal 62.5%. We could save that there. We'll go to our base, go to the top, add import. And then we have to go where to import from. That's dot slash variables. So we're importing all of our variables. We're going to go to the font size. We're going to change it to dollar sign font size base. Save that. Good, and nothing changed, but let me show you that at work real quick. This will be kind of a, a good one. This is an important one that you might want on all of your projects, because we could always change this one number uh, to 92. And we made our app much bigger. So our variables are very important. It keeps all of our numbers in one location, all of our colors in one location, and we can use them all throughout the app. It's great for theming things, great for changing the themes on things. So now we've changed our entire code to SCSS and we've used some SAS variables, and that's what we wanted to accomplish in this video. So great job, and I'll see you on the next one.